Hey folks, this is James. Welcome to another tutorial. This is Grease Pencil, but all of the curves have been created in the node network. And this is using a texture to give that brush stroke effect. And so being procedural, get a lot of variations out of this. And it is a looping animation. So you can get this to seamlessly loop over any frame range you want. And all the colors are controlled from the node network, which gives you a lot more control than doing it the standard way with Grease Pencil. So let's make a start on the tutorial. So you can start this off by adding an empty grease pencil object. Then nothing in the viewport. Add a geometry nose modifier. And first node will be points. And you want 10 points there. They're all at the same position, but you're only seeing one in the viewport. You want an instance onto those points. So you can grab an arc node, put that into the instance, have a look at that from the top view, and make that a resolution 64, just to get a smoother looking arc. Now I want to scale these, so scale instances. We have an index node, put that into the scale, and you can see those concentric arcs. Each one's one unit larger than the previous. The first one is actually zero, so it's scaling it down to nothing. I'm going to map that range. Zero to nine is the range of the index of the points. So zero to nine. And then change that to 0 0.5 to 0 0.05. And you got nine. They're just going to work a little bit on the appearance of this. The curves to grease pencil. Because there are already instances, this is working, so each instance becomes a separate layer. I'm going to turn everything else off. And make sure that's in preview. Now it may appear that there's a material on here, or one of the grease pencil materials. They're a bit misleading. We change that color. It's not doing anything. So you would set material on there. Change it to that. Might just change the name of that. You see now the color is updating. So I want to control the color from the nodes. The store named attribute color and just type in vertex underscore color. So this is an inbuilt attribute even though it actually doesn't show up on the list. And you can see that's overriding what's over here. I'm not actually going to do anything. So now I want to get spline parameter to read that factor in. So that's between 0 and 1. The one ends black, 
other end is white. And run that through a ramp. And make that constant. So it's not really a hard edge there, but it's near enough to make that a like a blue to an orange. Let's see, you can make that any color you want. And at about that 0.5, that's halfway. And similarly, I want to control the radius of that. So we want the set curve radius. Another factor in, you see that's gone way too large there because that's actually a radius of one. And remap that. A zero to one. Now 0.02. And so it essentially gives you a tail one into the other. Grab all of that. Control J, put that into a frame. So we know this is the appearance. And here's the last thing to do, which is the most complex, is to do the actual rotation animation. So at instance, rotate instances. And we want to animate it on that Z axis. So if you do a combine, that gives us access just to the Z. And we run an expression through there. So put scene time and the frame in. That is controlling it. It's going way too fast. I'm going to slow that down with some math nodes. The typical way to do these offset style animations is to divide the frame number by the number of frames in the thing. In this case, 240. That means by the time you get to the end, 240 divided by 240 is 1. They're getting that 0 to 1 range. Yes, it's not going around very far. I need to remap that. Zero to one is going to be zero to three sixty. Because this is in radians. Put in T A U. That's the equivalent of three sixty degrees. And you find that confusing. You can just do a conversion. So two radians, three sixty. And you see it loops over that range. The two forty frames are at thirty frames a second. Now we're not offset each of these arcs. So I want to add a value to the frame based on the index. So we do an add. There's a little bit of offset there. You can barely see it. So what I want to do there is multiply this to a larger value. And so it's not really doing anything. The reason for that is this map range is looking for a zero to one and it's gone Y over the one now. So you put another math node there. 
and fraction. That's just going to take everything after the decimal point. So essentially it means it keeps it within that 0 to 1 range. Okay, so that is somewhat working. Got a bit of an offset there, but they're all still going at the same rate. So instead, what I'm going to do put the frame into there. And there you're getting something a lot more interesting. So the only thing I'm not really liking here is the way it catches up at that point. So I'm just going to add an extra value on there. So at this point, everything's in that 0 to 360 range. It's going to add another value on. But the easiest way of doing it is just a random amount. And you can pump that up. Put in the towel. Put that same value in like that. No point going over that because it's not really going to make much difference. That means each arc will have just that separate offset there by somewhere between 0 and 360. Change that seed. And see that you're getting a different look there. And one other way you can do that. That looks a little bit more interesting. Is to use the index. And integer math, which is a new type of math node, got integer going in and out. Put that on modulo and put that on, say, two. That means every second one is going to be offset. You get more of an orderly sort of pattern look to that. And you can change that different values. I can use either of those random or that modulus. Okay, now the final thing on the appearance is going to be putting a texture onto this. So change that to texture. Put a brush stroke PNG. You can use any texture on here. And bump that up to a thousand. And put the blend up. So this has got an alpha channel on it. That means I'm getting the color but it's cutting it out if you want to get a blend you just put that a little bit lower so you're getting a little bit of the the paint stroke that's basically the end of the tutorial but of course any of these values you can play with to get a lot of different looks out of. And of course, putting in different textures and colors will yield a lot of different looks as well. Okay, so thanks for watching.